Altrification. The process where a servant's personality changes to the exact opposite. Sometimes, it may affect the class as well or their facial features as well. For example, where Jean Dark is a ruler class servant that is lawful good, Jean Dark Alter is an Avenger class servant that is chaotic evil. And the scary part about this process is that it can happen to everyone at random times with any means. Hu Chu Lin was walking down the hallway, minding his own business as he was carrying his spear. As he did, he came across Shiro. However, he noticed something different about him. HM? That's the kid over there, but something's off about him. Maybe I should check on him just in case. Siyu then headed towards Shiro and gave him his usual greeting. Hey there kid, he said cheerfully. However, what happened next completely shocked him. What do you want Lancer? Shiro said with a cold tone of voice. At that moment, Ku immediately knew something was wrong with Shiro. Okay. There's definitely something wrong with him. For a moment, Ku was silent before continuing the conversation. Is there something with you kid? No. Nothing's wrong with me. Anyways, stop bothering me for a moment. I'm busy, Shiro said as he immediately left, leaving Ku behind. I've got a bad feeling about this. Medusa was walking in the hallway, minding her own business as thoughts came into her head. Okay. I'm done with my daily tasks. Maybe I should go to the library and read some books over there. Murasaki did say she already has some of the newest novels in stock. As she continued walking down the hallway, it was then that she came across Shiro. Hey there Shiro, she greeted. Shiro let out a sigh. What do you want, writer, he said in a cold tone of voice. Medusa was stunned for a moment upon hearing Shiro calling her out by her class name instead of her true name. That's odd. I've never seen Shiro this cold before, don't tell me he's been altered by something or someone. For a moment, Medusa regained her composure before continuing the conversation. Shiro, are you alright? Shiro let out a sigh again this question again? I swear, I'm fine. And just in case, I gave the same answer to Lancer earlier. I, see. Anyway, leave me alone for a bit. I'm busy right now, he said as he quickly started to walk down the hallway, leaving Medusa behind like what he did to Ku earlier. And just like Ku, Medusa was left shocked and surprised by Shiro's words. What happened to you Shiro? So, he gave you the same treatment as well, huh? Ku said from behind. Medusa turned around to see Ku. Lancer. Ku went up to Medusa. Yeah. For some reason, the kid seems to be a bit different from before, and in a bad way I mean. Yeah, I think he may have been altered by something or someone. Altered? You mean, like what happened to one of my counterparts? Yeah. Ku remained silent for a moment before continuing the conversation. This isn't good. If he's altered, I don't know want to know. Me neither. However, we shouldn't conclude he's altered yet. Let's check him out a bit more. Good idea. And so, Ku and Medusa began to follow Shiro and his unusual behavior. Medea let out a small sigh as she was walking down the hallway. Damn it. I can't believe that the limited edition Saber figurine was sold out already, and for some reason, it feels like that overly arrogant golden archer was the one that bought all those figurines, well, might as well wait until the next batch comes out. As she continued to walk down the hallway, he noticed Shiro in the distance. And just like what happened with Ku, she sensed that something was wrong with him. That's Saber's former master, but something seems off about him. Like, something's changed inside of him or something. Soon, Medea got closer to where Shiro was. Hello, Saber's master. What do you want, Caster? Shiro asked. Oh nothing. 
Although, there is something different about you today. Shiro let out a sigh. Not this again, listen, there's nothing wrong with me. No matter how many people keep telling me there's something wrong with me today, there's nothing wrong with me right now. If anything, there's something wrong with you. Media was slightly amused at Shiro's words. Oh really? What's wrong with me? Well, for starters, your unhealthy obsession of yours with Arturia and her counterparts, he yelled. What? Yeah. You heard me. Your unhealthy obsession with Arturia and her counterparts. It's creeping me out. I mean, come on. Just how many figurines of Arturia and her counterparts do you need? Not to mention the fact that there are days I saw you come out from one of the shops in the mini mall, carrying a bunch of figurines of Arturia. What are you, a stalker? Medea was stunned with Shiro's words. It's not like that. Really? To me, it seems so, he argued back. How? What do we have here, a certain voice said. Shiro and Medea turned around to see Archer Gilgamesh coming towards them. Great. Not him. Medea thought with a scowl on her face. What do you want Gilgamesh? Shiro asked. Oh nothing. It's just amusing to watch a faker and a witch argue against each other, Gilgamesh arrogantly said. TCH. I'll burn you cur, Medea angrily said. Oh? I would like to see you try. After all, I ended up killing you like the worm you are, Gilgamesh said as he began to laugh. Shiro let out a sigh. You know, one of these days, that arrogance of yours is going to cost you and make you look like a fool, which you already are. Gilgamesh immediately stopped laughing upon hearing Shiro calling him a fool. What did you call me you faker? You didn't hear me the first time? Then I'll repeat it again. That arrogance of yours is going to cost you and make you look like a fool, which you already are. At that moment, Gilgamesh got mad at Shiro's words. You mongrel. How dare you call me a fool? What? I'm just saying the facts. I mean, especially after all the stunts you pulled off in the past, you definitely deserve to be called that. Speaking of which, how is it that you're called the King of Heroes when most of the time, you act like a spoiled villainous clown that has a massive ego the size of a nuclear explosion? Upon hearing those words, Gilgamesh's anger grew even further while Medea was trying her hardest not to laugh. PHHH Spoiled villainous clown, that's new. That's IT. I'll kill you. Gilgamesh yelled angrily. Shiro scoffed at Gilgamesh's threat. Sure, go ahead. And I'll kick your ass again, like what I did last time. Speaking of which, how's that arm of yours? He asked tautly, rubbing salt in the wound. For a moment, nothing happened as everyone was processing with what Shiro just said. While Medea felt like she need to run, Gilgamesh felt nothing but pure rage and anger as the memory of his arm being cut off appeared in his mind. At that moment, a portal appeared behind Gilgamesh and he pulled out EA. You, faker, he yelled as he began to swing EA at him. Shut up. In an instant, Shiro swung first and drew his Muramesa blade, striking him down. Gilgamesh fell to the ground immediately upon getting sliced with the sword. Why you, damn, Munro? He muttered. Oof. That's rich, coming from you. You're the biggest mongrel here, Shiro coldly said as he sheathed his Muramesa blade. Speaking of which, I have a few words for you. Shiro then looked down at Gilgamesh with a cold glare. Drown in your arrogance and die. Gilgamesh got mad upon hearing Shiro's words but was struggling to keep himself awake. Damn you, faker. He muttered before passing out. Shiro let out a sigh before turning to Medea. Don't say a word about this. Got it? Why yeah. Good. 
Shiro then started to walk down the hallway again, leaving Midia alone with her thoughts. Yup. Something's wrong with him. Meanwhile, Ku and Medusa watched the entire scene in the distance, and they were shocked with what just happened. Okay. Something is wrong with him. We should warn the others, Ku said. I agree with that. Especially after what he just said, Medusa replied. And thus, Ku and Medusa headed toward the cafeteria, as they did, they ended up meeting Arturia, Ishtar, Parvati, Saitonai, Astria, Irisfield, Karitsugu, Emiya, Jaguarman, and Ritsuka. As they did, they out a sigh of relief as they found the people they were searching for. Eh? Who? Medusa? Is there something wrong? Ritsuka asked as he noticed their faces. Has Shiro been here yet? Medusa asked. No? Why? Ku let out a sigh. Well, we've got news for all of you, and it's about the kid. Eh? He did that? Ritsuka yelled after hearing what happened earlier. Yeah. Me and Ryder saw the kid taunting the King of Heroes and beating him up. And furthermore, the words he said were completely out of character. Really? Yeah. In fact, I even still remember the words he said to him near the end. He said, drown in your arrogance and die. Everyone was shocked at the words Shiro just said. And in Emiya's case, he felt not only shocked, but a deja vu coming out of those words for some reason. Drown in your arrogance and die, why does that sound familiar to me for some reason? Wow. To think that a Miyakuan could say such words, it's quite shocking, I'll admit, Ishtar said. Yeah. That's not like him to say, Arturia said. Saitonai then turned to Arturia. Isn't this one of Merlin's pranks again? she asked. Nope. Merlin wasn't responsible for the sudden change of personality. In fact, he was surprised as well when we asked him earlier, who said as he answered Saitonai's question. Maybe he's having a bad mood. You know, boys have that too, Jaguar Man said. Exactly. Upon hearing that voice, everyone turned around to see Shiro, who was standing at the entrance of the cafeteria, with an unamused look on his face. Shiro? Ritsuka said. Yeah. It's just as both Lancer and Ryder said earlier. There's nothing wrong with me. And I'm certain that nobody messed with me. Although to be fair, I do feel funny inside earlier. Everyone was silent. Anyways, I'll be somewhere else for now. Also, I won't be cooking for a while, so bye, he said as he left the cafeteria. In an instant, everyone's mouths dropped upon hearing the last words of the sentence. DDD did Shiro just said dash Arturia said fearfully but was cut off from Pooh finishing her sentence. Yeah. Looks like the kid said he's not going to be cooking for a while, Koo finished. At that moment, everyone exploded. Eh? A Miyakun not cooking? Impossible. Ishtar yelled. What the heck? This can't be real. No cooking for Moni chan for a while? Saitona yelled. Senpai, what happened to you? You're not cooking for a while? That's impossible. Parvati yelled. Sheru, you shouldn't act like this, IT shouldn't be allowed. Astria muttered. Shiro's not cooking. This is not normal. Jaguar man yelled. That's IT. We're bringing him back and turning him back to normal. Arturia yelled. Emiya remained silent, but a few thoughts were going through his head. What the heck is going on here? Why is my younger self acting so differently right now? Don't tell me there's something possessing him right now, even still, it's reminding me of what I used to be before, and no cooking? That's impossible. Okay. It's settled. Something happened to my son. Irisfield yelled. IRI, calm down, 
Karitsuga calmly said. How can I? My poor son's is going on a weird phase, and we don't know why. Iris Vale said with fake tears coming out of her eyes. Yeah. And yelling about it isn't going to solve anything. If we're going to find out who or what turned Shiro into this, then we need to be calm and think about this, Medusa said. Yeah. For now, just be patient. Please? Ritsuka asked. Iris Veal let out a pout. Fine. Ritsuka let out a sigh. Now then, will everyone calm down right now so we can figure out a solution for this? As everyone heard Ritsuka's words, they immediately calmed down. Great. Now let's find out who did it. And when we do, we'll find the person who's behind the sudden change in Shiro's personality and either ask the cure from the person or beat him up to get it, Karitsugu said. Ritsuka nearly sweat dropped from the last part of the sentence Karitsugu said, but continued the conversation. True. The sooner we find the source of Shiro's sudden change, the better. Who knows what kind of trouble will happen next. At that moment, everyone stood up and nodded in agreement. Yeah. We're going to bring him back, they all said in unison. And so, everyone in the cafeteria began their search for the reason of how Shiro was altered. As they did, they asked many of Chaldea's servants if they saw anyone responsible for Shiro's sudden change in personality. However, so far, nobody hasn't seen anyone or anything responsible for the altrification of Shiro. Soon, everyone met back in the cafeteria. Alright, did all of you ask everyone in Chaldea if there was anything or anyone behind the altrification of Shiro? Ritsuka asked. Arturia, Ishtar, Parvati, Saitonai, Astria, Irisville, Emiya, Karitsugu, Medusa, Jaguarman, and Poom nodded sideways in reply, telling him that their search came out cold. Okay, we've checked everyone so far, and every one of them hasn't seen anything or anyone behind the altrification of Shiro, just who is behind this. Ritsuka muttered. If you don't mind master, may I help you on this problem of yours, a new voice said. Ritsuka turned around and saw the one person he was looking for. He let out a wide smile and said, yes please. Of course. James Moriarty was in his bar, wiping his glasses. As he did, a few thoughts came into his head. H.M. I can't believe I've altered Amiya Shiro's personality. I'll admit, that was possibly the evilest thing I've ever done, and I would love to see the result of my actions. However, I can't let myself and my actions be revealed, or else the women that knows Amiya Shiro will kill me. And as if his thoughts were betraying him, Arturia, Ishtar, Parvati, Saitonai, Astria, Irisville, Emiya, Karitsugu, Medusa, Ritsuka, Jaguarman, and Ku appeared in front of him. And they all had an angry look on their faces. Especially the girls. Ah shit. Moriarty, we've heard from Holmes that you were responsible for the altering of Shiro's personality, would you care to explain why you did that? Ritsuka asked in a polite, yet angry voice. Moriarty mentally cursed upon hearing his archenemy's name. Damn you Holmes. Everyone. Get him. Arturia commanded. And in the end, everyone beat up Moriarty until he undid the altrification he did on Shiro, and then he had to apologize to everyone afterwards, including Gilgamesh, who was not extremely happy, even with the apology, 